A great American landscape where wind-blown grass still meets sky and nature reigns supreme. This remote location near Seligman, Arizona is one of seven active release sites in North America where the endangered black-footed ferret is making a return to the wild. The Aubrey Valley was selected as the primary release site because of the high concentration of prairie dogs. Because they dine exclusively on prairie dogs and live in their burrows, black-footed ferrets face a rather unique dilemma. It's really difficult to convince the public that in order to save an endangered species, you must save something that is considered a, a pest or a vermin. In 1999, the 12 western states created the black tail Prairie Dog Conservation Team. And the objective of that team is to create population objectives for prairie dogs, which then translate in potential reintroduction sites or habitat for black-footed ferrets. Ferrets are bred at captive facilities, then sent to places like Aubrey Valley, where prairie dogs still naturally occur. Here, they are monitored for an average of 60 days and prepared for their return to the wild. Behind me, you can see one of our preconditioning pens. These are used to acclimate our ferrets to the environment and to the climate regime, and also to living on a prairie dog colony before they are released into the wild. Survival statistics have shown that ferrets that are raised in a pen conditioning have much greater survival than ferrets that are raised in cages. Okay, Laura, the weight is 3.2. Before their release, they are weighed and treated for fleas and ticks. On this day, three ferrets will be making the journey to freedom. Go. With the ferrets loaded in carriers, the biologists drive to pre-selected wild prairie dog burrows. Both the sun and the temperature are dropping fast. Well, it looks like our site is right over here. We marked the specific burrows that we want to release them into, and so now we're just using our GPS unit in order to find that site. With two releases complete, the biologists locate the last flag marker. Perfect. Releases can take a while. A ferret is sometimes reluctant to leave the crate, but eventually it darts into the safety of the new burrow. That's cool. We got three more back in the wild, and hopefully they'll survive and make more. Get Great more job, ferrets crew. out there. The Aubrey Valley is about 120,000 acres. It's one of the largest reintroduction sites in the national program. We've released about 144 ferrets into this area. We're not sure how many have survived. They're very elusive animals, they're very secretive, and they're typically only active at night. So spotlighting and radio telemetry are our primary methods to find these animals. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, do you see that? There's one right there. All right. Tracking released animals has provided important information new generations of wild-born kits, proof that the project is working. The black-footed ferret once roamed the length of North America, and they are poised to do so again. Toronto has a breeding facility, Mexico has plentiful prairie dog populations, and released 150 ferrets back to the wild last year. With all of North America's nations now involved, the future of this fragile species appears a little brighter.